this point, if I bring her in close so you can see, we could kind of build on the skin tone a little bit more. And I'm going to go into Naples Yellow and add a little bit of pink, but a cool toned pink this time. And this time it's more of a peach and that's okay, things are still quite wet, so it's going to be a bit messy. They haven't fully dried, which is, it's fine if things start flowing. It's a uh, watercolor illustration, so it's, uh, it's okay if that happens. This time I'm just going to guide it a little bit more wherever I can. And again, set it dry. Okay, so now we'll start adding a bit more of the pink because I want her cheeks to be lovely and pink. So I'm going to go straight into this color and see how I like it. So the watercolor has dried here, so I'm going to just create these large round cheeks like so. And then what a bit of a Skin tone. I'm thinking something of this nature. So you'll notice we don't have any eyebrows just yet. I'm just going to darken a little bit around the eyes. Again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect, but what I do want is to make sure that it's soft line down here. And up here as well. Just pull it out with some water. Okay, go back into the color and just intensify where you lost a bit of color. And then the same one, just use to create some shadowing. So for instance, on the nose, if you wanted a little more color. And a bit here. In fact, on the forehead, I'm going to try and soften this line because it's a bit too harsh because it's watercolor. It's water soluble, so you can still do that. So I'm going to do the same in the neck area as well. And I'm going to dry it again and come back. So here is where she is at right now. And I'm happy with the skin tone, I'm happy with the textures. Um, so it is now time to focus on this flower. So you can see how the petals are touching her skull and it looks weird. It looks like, um, you know, like sort of transparent, um, petals. So we need to find a nice gold watercolor, which, where is mine? I have my own, which I made and it is like so so beautiful that I'm gonna use it now I'm just need to find it where it is so here is the gold that I made <clears throat> it will be up for sale as part of um, a new as part of my new um, watercolor palette so these are my handmade vegan watercolors and I I'm not sure if I can tell you much more than that yet, just because I don't know when this video is coming out and what I already would have done a release for the new set. But um, basically all I can say is that it's called liquid gold because it quite literally is just like liquid gold. So 
So I'm just going to colour some of the petals. I'm not going to go ahead and do all of them. Just in a few areas. Because otherwise I will lose the detail which I don't want to. But the main reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't have this like a bold head. So I might do these little round bits here as well, here and there. Just remaining some of the detail. So that probably should be enough. Maybe one up here as well like so actually I'm going to color in all of the round bits they look nice okay so here we go so you can see this is as gold as it gets I made you a bit of a wash just by adding more water so it's got a bit more transparency to it um, and less so strong because like I said if I just color everything in gold we'll lose this beautiful detail of of the lines of these gorgeous beautiful delicate flowers so I'm just going to go into certain areas like that and just add a bit of gold just on the tip of the petals just so we still can see that it's a flower So I think we're there now. It looks lovely. I might actually create a stronger mix just where this wax flower is. Just the center of it is kind of asking for that strong mix of gold. It looks gorgeous. There we go. So I'm going to bring you a bit closer and that's what we have here so it's kind of now has this stunning decadence about it okay let's carry on with the face so for the lips um, I quite often like to go with a colored pencil and especially I prefer to use the Holbein's because they create this kind of like a um, glossy finish and for the lips I really like that because I can really burnish the color in get it as saturated as possible and it will look almost like a lipstick because a lipstick has a bit of a gloss to it like not a lip gloss but that sort of um, nice reflection of color that you get from a creamy lipstick and there are a couple of colors here that I have so these ones I purchased open stock on top of the 50 pastel set that I have and these are some really nice lip colors so I've got some darker ones and I've got a pink and a red and I may just audition them here at the bottom and as I'm swatching I'm looking as I'm swatching, I'm looking at the colors that I have going on here, whether that would be a nice color or not. And uh, I'm loving this color. That's nice. So the first one was burgundy. Then we have wine red. So that's an option. Burgundy looks just way too red, um, too dark. Then we have this one which actually strawberry in this case uh, it kind of works with that blush actually so maybe then we have a nice red which is gorgeous so this is the signal red it's definitely a possibility and then we have this 
Luminous Opera, which is like a neon pink. And that probably is a bit much for this particular illustration. So I feel like if I use the strawberry, it's just going to be blending in a little bit. So I want something either darker or more vibrant. So strawberries and no. And then we have these two colors to audition. So what you could do in this case is you could take like a little uh, piece of paper like so and you could color in so you could color in one half of the paper go right to the edge like so and then do the same on the other side with the other color And then just audition the colors so you can go like that and see what you think or you can go like that I think the red looks pretty cool so I'm gonna go with the red I need a nice sharp point because I want to get into all of these areas here also I will use a mat if I can find it so I'll use this illustrated faith bible mat it's called by Bella Boulevard I looked at another mat to buy a few different sizes but they seem to be sold out currently I bought mine on Amazon if you know where it is available please do let me and other viewers know because I know that some people were really interested in these, as am I. This is just one of those fantastic products that has been created um, for something that, that it also can be used for something completely different. So obviously Bible paper is quite thin, that's what it's been created for, but when you work with pencils and you like to push quite hard on them, what tends to happen is that you will create a pressed image on the other page, which you don't want to do that. So here we go. Now these pencils are not good for layering, especially if you like to push quite hard. The pencils that are good for such a thing is luminance. I find they're the best in the sense that you can just keep on building and building and adding more color and blending. Whereas with these ones, if you add pressure, there is a certain limitation. Uh, you just get to that point where that's it. It's not, not going to build up anymore. So that's why I can't really start adding any colors here but if I wanted to do that I would need to choose a different pencil so here we go lips are done now we just need to um, to add an eyebrow I'm going to go for something quite easy just like that And then I am going to do the eyes. Now with the eyes, um, I prefer to also go in with some nice um, pencils. So for this one, I'm going to go with <clears throat> with the luminance. And that would be Payne's Grey 30%, the color. Just like so. And 
and then I like to take a white and just blend it out just a touch. So I've got a pure white here that does a fantastic job at blending the colour and make it softer. So I'm not colouring in the entire eye. So that is it. I, If I wanted to create a bit more um, depth, uh, these are the colours. Light Sienna, Mars Orange and Terracotta from Dervant Drawing Pencils. These are fantastic for just building up a little bit of a depth. And these are the colours that I love for my illustrations. So I just go around a little bit over the watercolour. And then there's a lighter colour which I like to use to blend out. And then there's a darker colour. Which I just put right in the darkest point. Now if I accidentally went into the white with the pencil I would try to rescue it with this pencil here which is Holbein soft white it's a very white pencil it kind of smudges things out it's really really intense Okay, so what else do we have here? The middle color again. Just to blend things out a bit. Okay, so that's it. I wouldn't really fuss about it any longer. I would give her my signature lashes like that and she is ready. So here we go. With the help of a few stamps I created this um, lovely fun little illustration and I could have um, you know drawn it by hand all of it but it would have taken me a lot longer and it's nice to have a little helper in one of those days and that's it I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching I'll see you soon